Hi, my name is Graham Smith, and I'm one of the authors that helped develop the learning approach to mathematics that is found in our textbook as well as the video you are about to experience. To learn more about our approach to learning mathematics, visit the web address that accompanies this video. Now, enjoy the video. Solving one-step equations. This video will help you determine if a number is a solution to an equation, solve equations of the form x plus a equals b, and solve equations of the form a times x equals b. Determine if a number is a solution to an equation. Let's start with some definitions. An equation is a mathematical statement stating that two expressions are equal. Right down here I have an expression. I'm sorry, I have an equation. And here in the equation I have the expression on the left which is x plus 10 is equal to the expression on the right. Now if a value is substituted in for this variable and it makes x plus 10 a true statement then that value is a solution to this equation. So in this case we've had a lot of time to look at this here x plus 10 equals 15. The value that I would need to substitute for x would be 5 because 5 plus 10 would give me 15. So 5 is a solution to this equation. If I substituted a value that was not 5, like let's say I substituted 6, then I would have on the left side of this equation 16 equals 15. It's not a true statement, therefore 6 is not a solution to this equation. Now let's take a look at an example that will help you understand how to check to see if a number is a solution to an equation. Example 1. Is negative 3 a solution to this equation? Well, this is a more complicated equation and we can't just take a look here and, and see if this is going to work by just looking at it. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to substitute negative 3 into both sides of this equation. Now when we make that substitution, just like we did when we evaluated this expression, we want to put an open set of parentheses wherever there was a variable. And so here there was an x, so I put an open set of parentheses. Here there was an x, so I put an open set of parentheses. Once I have the parentheses set up, now I'll go ahead and I'll take negative 3 and plug it in to the, to the equation that we have here. So I'll put a negative 3 in here, negative 3 in here, and now I want to work both sides independently and come up with an answer. So on the left, we're going to follow the order of operations. So I want to do that multiplication first, that 3 times negative 3 first. Well, 3 times negative 3 is going to give me a negative 9. On the right, I want to do this subtraction. However, I'm dealing with negative numbers here. So let's go ahead and look at this as addition. So I have a negative 3, and I'm going to look at this as adding to that negative 3 a negative 4. So a negative 3 plus a negative 4 would give me a negative 7. Let's see, we're still simplifying the right side. I'm sorry, the left side. The right side's all done. Uh, negative 9 plus a positive 2 is going to give me a negative 7. And since I end up with a true statement, I put a little check there, and that little check means that negative 3 is a solution. Now it's time to check your understanding to see if a value is a solution to an equation. Pause your video player and answer this guided practice question. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Question 1. Is negative 5 a solution to this equation? Well, we want to plug it in to find out. First thing we want to do is put open sets of parentheses wherever there was a variable. So I'd have 2, open set of parentheses, minus 4 equals, there's an x, so I put an open set of parentheses, minus 8. Now I'm ready to substitute this value of negative 5 in. So we put a negative 5 there, put a negative 5 there, and now we are going to simplify each side independently. So taking a look on the left, I would want to do the multiplication first, 2 times negative 5, that would give me negative 10. On the right, I just have some a subtraction there, but remember we're not going to work with subtraction here. All I'm going to do is think of this as a negative 5, and I'm going to think of this as a negative 8. So I'm going to say a negative 5 plus a negative 8 is going to give me a negative 13. Okay. Simplifying the left now, I have a negative 10, and I'm going to add to that a negative 4. That is going to give me a negative 14. And so I have this statement, negative 14 equals negative 13. That is not a true statement. So therefore we would say negative 5 is not a solution. Solve equations of the form x plus a equals b. Let's start with the definition. The addition property of equations 
lets us add or subtract the same number to each side of an equation to get an equivalent equation. So the addition property lets us add or subtract the same number to each side of an equation. Let's take a look here. I've got two simple equations here. The first one I'll add something to each side. And so in my simple equation I have 10 equals 10. And if I were to add 2 to the left side and the right side of this equation, I end up with an equivalent equation, 12 equals 12. You can see that when I end up with this equivalent equation, I still get a true statement. So as long as I'm adding the same thing to both sides of my equation, I still get a true statement. And that's important because this is going to allow us, this little simple property here is going to allow us to solve equations. Let's take a look over here at this next equation and we'll show you the same thing works for subtraction. So I start with this very simple equation, 8 equals 8. Well, I can subtract 5 from this side and as long as I subtract 5 from the other side, I'm going to end up with a true statement. And so 8 minus 5 is 3 and then 8 minus 5 is 3. I still end up with a true statement. So as long as I do addition or subtraction to both sides of an equation, I still end up with a true statement. Now let's take a look and see how that addition property of equations is going to allow us to solve an equation. To solve an equation like x plus 3 equals 5, we isolate the variable by undoing addition and getting x all alone on one side of the equal sign. So this is very important. The way that we solve equations is we get x all by itself. And if you can take a look right here in my first line of this statement, the thing that is keeping x from being all alone is this addition of 3. If I can get rid of that addition of 3, x is going to be all alone. It's going to be easy to see what 3 has to equal. So to isolate x, we must undo this addition of 3. So to undo the addition of 3, we use the inverse operation, subtraction of 3. And you'll notice what I'm doing here. I'm subtracting 3 from each side of the equation. I want to make sure that when I get done with this subtraction, I still have a true statement. And we just saw in the last definition that as long as I subtract the same number from both sides, I'm still going to end up with a true statement or an equivalent equation. And so what happens now? I have 3 minus 3 on the left side here. That's 0. That gets x all alone or isolated on the left side. And you can see on the right we end up with 2. Once x is isolated, we're going to have this x equals some number. And it's going to be very easy to see the value of x that is going to make our equation a true statement. Now let's take a look at some examples that will help you understand how to isolate a variable to solve an equation. Example 2, we're asked to solve this equation and so what we want to think is what is in the way of, of keeping this y, this variable here, from being all alone. So we're looking at the right side of the equation. The only thing that is keeping that y from being all alone is this negative 8. So what I want to do now is I want to undo that or get rid of that negative 8. So what I would do is I would add 8 to get rid of it. Now, I want to make sure I keep my equation true, so since I've added 8 to the, right, to the right, I need to add 8 to the left. So let's take a look at what's left. On the right side, negative 8 plus 8 is 0, so all that's left on the right side now is y. So y is isolated. That's what we're shooting for here. And now on the left side, 12 plus 8 is 20. And now you can see we've got our equation solved, y equals 20. Now let's go ahead and check to make sure that solution was correct. So all we're going to do is plug that value back into the original equation up here. I'm going to plug it right back into the original equation to make sure it works. So let's see, I had 12 equals negative 8 plus, I'm going to put an open set of parentheses when I make this substitution, and we got 20. So now we're going to simplify that right side. Left side's good, that's going to stay 12. Right side, a negative 8 plus a positive 20 will give me a positive 12. And we put a little check mark there that says that yes, that solution of 20 was correct. Example 3, we're asked to solve this equation. y plus 1 half equals 3 fourths. And you can see that we're trying to get y all alone. The thing that's keeping y from being all alone is this addition of 1 half. So I want to subtract 1 half from each side of this equation. On the left side, that's easy. 1 half minus 1 half is 0, so we're left with y. The right side of our equation is not so easy because I cannot subtract the fractions as they stand. I need to get a common denominator. So the first thing we want to do is get that common denominator, the least common denominator. And if we look at my denominators, 4 and 2, the LCD is going to be 4. This fraction, that 3 fourths fraction, is good. It's the 1 half that's not good. 
So we're going to take 1 half and build it into a like fraction with a denominator of 4. So my missing multiplier is 2. So that would give me 2 fourths. So really the subtraction I'm looking at here then is 3 fourths minus 2 fourths. So 3 fourths minus 2 fourths is 1 fourth. And what I've done right here, all of this work would go off to the side on scratch paper. I don't want to get that all mixed over here in my equation solution. So I've done this work and I found out that the answer to this subtraction was 1 fourth. So I'm going to put that back into my equation. And now that, that in this case, that solves the equation. I get y equals 1 fourth. Now let's check and make sure that that's going to work. So where there was y, I'm going to put an open set of parentheses. Plus 1 half equals 3 fourths. And the value that I'm checking is y was 1 fourth. So I'm going to replace y with 1 fourth. Now I need to add this 1 fourth and 1 half together. And we've already done most of this work right over here in our scratch work. We know that 1 half equals 2 fourths. So over here I'm going to replace this 1 half with 2 fourths. So I get a common denominator so I can add this together. Now a lot of students think this is an okay place to stop your check. 1 fourth plus 2 fourths, yes, that equals 3 fourths. But we don't want to stop until we get a single answer on each side here. So the right is good, that was 3 fourths, and on the left I want to say 1 fourth plus 2 fourths is 3 fourths. And now when we get the same number on both sides, that's when we're done with our check. And yes, 1 fourth was a solution to this equation. Now it's time to check your understanding of isolating a variable to solve an equation. Pause your video player and answer these guided practice questions. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Question 2. We're asked to solve this equation, and here we have 6 equals x plus 13. So really it's this plus 13 that we have to get rid of to isolate that variable. So to get rid of the addition of 13, I'm going to subtract 13. I want to make sure my equation stays true, so I want to subtract 13 from the other side as well. Let's take a look and see what we have left. On the right side it's easy, we just have x. On the left side I have 6 minus 13. Well I'm subtracting more than I'm starting with. So let's just think about this as 6 plus negative 13. Well, 6 plus negative 13 is going to give me a negative 7. Okay, now let's go ahead and check that solution. So I'll have 6 equals open set of parentheses plus 13. And I want to substitute my solution here, which was negative 7. And let's see. A negative 7 plus a positive 13 is going to give me a positive 6. And so that answer checks. Question three, we're asked to solve this equation, and in this case, it's this addition of one-third that I have to get rid of to get x all alone. So to get rid of the addition of one-third, we're going to subtract one-third. And I want to make sure I subtract it from both sides. Now the right side is going to be tough, so we're going to have to go off in some scratch work, but before we do that, let's get our answer down on the left side. On the left side, I have one-third minus one-third is zero, so I'm left with just y. Now let's go off on some scratch work and calculate this out. So I have five-ninths minus one-third. Well, I got to get an LCD. Let's see. The LCD of those two fractions is going to be nine. So the five-ninths is good. It's the one-third that's not so good. So I got to take one-third and I got to build it into a like fraction so that it has a denominator of nine. So my missing multiplier is three. So that's three-ninths. So really what I have here is five-ninths and I'm going to replace one-third with three-ninths, which will give me two-ninths. All right, so that was scratch work. So we come back over here to our problem now, and we say that that 5 ninths minus 1 third ended up being 2 ninths. Okay, now let's check that answer. So we have open set of parentheses for y plus 1 third equals 5 ninths. And now I want to plug that answer in, that 2 ninths of an answer. Okay, let's take a look. We got to get a common denominator. That's going to be 9. And one-third, we've already done the work for one-third here. When I change that into a common denominator of nine, it was right there. One-third is equal to three-ninths. So I'm going to have two-ninths, and I'm going to replace one-third with three-ninths equals five-ninths. And now we want to go one more step, which is to add those two fractions on the left. Two-ninths plus three-ninths is five-ninths. And on the right, we have five-ninths. And so we could say, yes, check. That is a solution. So we know that we solved the problem correctly in the beginning. Solve equations of the form a times x equals b. 
take a look at another definition. The multiplication property of equations lets us multiply or divide each side of an equation by the same non-zero number to get an equivalent equation. This is very similar to the, to the addition property of equations. Let's take a look at my first simple equation here. 10 equals 10. I'm allowed to multiply both sides by the same number. So let's say I multiplied this side by 4 and I multiplied this side by 4. I would still get a true equivalent equation. 40 equals 40. So as long as I multiply both sides by the same number, I still get a true statement. Now let's take a look at another simple equation. We'll look at division. So I have my equation here. 8 equals 8. Let's divide both sides by some number. I'll say uh, 2. And when we're solving equations, this form of addition with the fraction bar, this form, and when we're solving equations with division, this fraction bar is the way to go. We don't want to use the traditional division sign here. So let's take a look here. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and then on the other side, 8 divided by 2 is 4. We still get a true equivalent equation. So as long as we multiply both sides by the same number or divide both sides by the same number, we still end up with a true equivalent equation. In the equation 5n equals 20, we must undo multiplication by 5 to isolate the variable n. Because multiplication and division are inverse operations, dividing both sides by 5 isolates the variable n and solves the equation. So let's take a look at what that, that looks like here. I have the equation 5n equals 20. Now I want to get n all alone and isolated. So to undo the multiplication by 5, I'm going to divide both sides by 5. So I divide by 5, do the same thing to the other side to make sure that I still have a true equivalent equation. And let's take a look and see what happens. 5 and 5, those are common factors. Those would divide out just like we've done when we were simplifying fractions. So what I'm left with on the left side here is I have n over 1. On the right side, well, let's take a look. We could do that division. In fact, we don't even want to factor that out. We want to go ahead and do that division. 20 divided by 5 is just 4. Now, any number over 1 is just that number. So n over 1 is just equal to n. And so there I've solved my equation. n is equal to 4. Now let's take a look at some examples that will help you understand how to undo multiplication and division to isolate a variable and solve an equation. Example 4. We're asked to solve this equation and you can see what's keeping y from being all alone is this multiplication by negative 3. So to undo multiplication by negative 3, I'm going to divide by that exact same number. So I want to divide this side by negative 3. Since I divided the left side by negative 3, I want to divide the right side by negative 3. And now you can see on the left side, the negative 3's, the common factor of negative 3, will divide right out for us and leave us with y over 1, which is just y. On the right side, 18 divided by a negative 3 will give us a negative 6 for our answer. Let's check that solution. So I would have negative 3 times negative 6 equals 18 when I put this back in the original equation. And on the left side, a negative 3 times a negative 6 would give me a positive 18. On the right side, I also get a positive 18. So that checks. Example 5. I'm asked to solve this equation. And you can see the thing that's keeping y from being all alone here is this division by 4. So I want to undo the division with multiplication. Now, it's a little bit trickier because it really kind of looks like a fraction here. To undo that division by 4, I want to multiply by 4. But I want to write that 4 on the left side as a fraction. I want to write it as 4 over 1. Now on the right side of this equation, I don't have a fraction. I just want to multiply by 4 just like that as a regular number. Now the left side, you can see our common factors of 4 dividing out. And that's why I wanted to write that like a fraction. So what I'm left with on the left side is y over 1, which is just y. And on the right side, I have 8 times 4 which is 32. Now let's check that answer. So I would put parentheses where there was a variable and now I'm going to substitute. We got an answer of 32 so I'm plugging the 32 back in. So let's see on the left side 32 divided by 4 is 8. On the right side we already had 8 so that answer checks. Now it's time to check your understanding of undoing multiplication or division to isolate a variable and solve an equation. Pause your video player 
and answer these guided practice questions. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Question six, we're asked to solve this equation and you can see the thing that's keeping the variable x from being all alone is the multiplication by eight. So to undo the multiplication of eight, I'm gonna divide by eight. Since I divided the right side by eight, I need to divide the left side by eight to make sure that we still end up with a true statement. So let's see, eight x divided by eight those common factors of eight are gonna divide out and leave us with x over one. Well, x over one is just x. And on the left side, negative 32 divided by a positive eight is gonna give us negative four. Let's check that answer now. So I have a negative 32, eight, and then an open set of parentheses where there was a variable. Now I'm gonna substitute the negative four in. And let's see, so I have negative 32 on the left side. A positive 8 times a negative 4 is going to give me negative 32. So I know that that solution I found of negative 4 was correct. Question 7, we're asked to solve this equation. And you can see here, the thing that's keeping y from being all alone is this division by negative 6. So to undo division by negative 6, I want to multiply by negative 6. However, on this left side, it's a little bit trickier. I want to multiply by negative 6 as a fraction. So I'll write it as negative 6 over 1. On the right side, I don't have a fraction, so I'm going to write negative 6 just as a regular whole number, negative 6. Let's take a look now. Uh, the com on the left side, the common factor of negative 6 divides right out for us. We're left with y over 1, which is just y. On the right side, we have a positive 5 times a negative 6, which gives us a negative 30. So y is negative 30. Let's check that solution. So open set of parentheses where there was a variable. Negative 6 equals 5. Now let's put that value in. That was negative 30. And so let's see. Negative 30 divided by a negative 6 gives me a positive 5. Positive 5 on the other side. So yes, that solution worked. If you found this video helpful, I encourage you to check out our other videos that we have on YouTube or visit the web address that accompanies this video to learn more about our approach to learning mathematics.